Hello guys, how are you doing? So today we are going to be talking about zero force members and I know I covered this in statics but this is the part for structural analysis so we're going to be talking about zero force members, how to identify zero force members in 3D. First, uh, just a quick review in the YouTube channel I have also this for zero force members in 2D and it's a very comprehensive problem so I would recommend you to go over there and check it. But there are two rules for zero force member in 2D, which, by the way, they are still going to apply for 3D because uh, every time that I found a plane, uh, I'm going to be here in 2D if all the members are in one plane. So there are two members. The first rule, it says something like this. It says if in a joint uh, there are two bars, two bars or two forces or one bar of one force, and they are non-collinear, both must be zero. So if you go here really quick, and the reasoning for that is explained also in statics the easy way and is explained in, in in the material that I posted for statics before. But anyway, you have two here, right? In this joint A and nothing else, but then both have to be zero. And if you look at the joint D also, you have two. And if this rule, if this rule is correct, which is correct, then both should be zero. So both of them are zero. And what the zero force member basically is doing there is, is uh, nothing. There are a bunch of reasons for that. But uh, there's no force, internal force in that member. So if you're going to calculate these straws instead of doing these, you can basically calculate that. And the second rule, it says if in a, in a joint there are three, now three what? Three bars, three forces, or any combination of bar and forces that adds up to three, no more than three. Three. Remember to count also the forces, the reactions. This is an error that the majority of the people do. If in a joint there are three, and two of them are collinear and one is not, then one that is not is zero. And I also explained this uh, and the reason why it's zero in, in a previous posting. So if you look at here, for example, I have one, two, three. Two of them are collinear, the one that is not should be zero. And here also one, two, three. Three of them are collinear, the one that is not is zero. Uh, you can eliminate them and calculate this. Okay, you have three here also, and this is a lot of people say that, oh, but you have three here also in this part, so what is happening here? Why this is not zero? Look at the rule. It says three of them, two of them are collinear. Do you see any two of any of these two collinear? No. You also have three here. One, two, three. Because this is a reaction. But they are non-collinear, so the rule doesn't apply there. Now, with zero force members in 3D, situation is similar. There are two theorems or two rules. Some authors, some books, uh, name up to seven rules. I will name only one because it's only one rule if you want to see it. And from that rule and applying the the rules from 2D, everything else comes. But let's let's summarize this in two rules or two theories. The first one it says, if all the members and external forces, all of them except one, is out of plane, if all of them are containing the same plane except one, that one that goes out of plane should be zero. That is similar to the, in a plane you have two collinear members, the one that is not is zero. This is something similar, but now we are talking about planes. For example, if you look at the plane in the back of this frame, this 3D frame, you see this force P, this bar, and this bar, all of them are in the same plane, but there is one bar sticking out of the plane by looking at the joint B. That bar should be a zero force member. You can also look at the top plane, for example. If you look at the top plane, this part here, and you look at the same joint B, then you have the force, this member and this member going into the same plane, but this column is coming out of the plane. So that should be a zero force member. And you don't have any other similar situation here because uh, if you look at this joint and you look at this plane, then you have two things or two bars coming out of the plane. If you look at the top one here in this part, then you have, yeah, these two are in the same one, but these two are coming out of the plane. There's not the same situation. So theorem number one, if all the forces and bars are in the same plane and only one is sticking out of the plane, it's getting out of the plane, it's not contained in that plane, that bar should be a zero force member. And the second theorem, 
it says it's similar to that one that it says if you join in a joint you have two only and only two and they are non-collinear both are zero same thing happens here but now we are talking about a space so it's not two it's three in a joint that do not lie in the same plane because if they lie in, in the same plane then we have to go back and apply the rules for plane to the trusses if they don't lie the three of them two of them of course they are going to lie in the same plane but the third one is not, is not lying in the same plane then and nothing else is there then all of them are zero but if you look at this this is the same this is the same rule as before because look I can say oh I'm gonna pass a plane through here through these two bars and all of them are containing the same plane except one is sticking out so that could be zero and I take it out or I can do the same thing here I put a plane here and the one coming out of the plane is this one that is zero and so on but anyway if you see three and they are not in the same plane and nothing else three when I say three remember is two bars and a force two forces and a bar any combination three bars three forces even any combination that adds up to three all of them have to be zero okay let's apply this thing uh, identify all zero force members and of course let's mention what theorem is being used for that the way you start this it, it, this can be started by several different ways I'm just gonna follow what I prepared and I'm gonna try to explain you that this here these supports I already put the reactions but, but those are those are ball and socket joints so those are three reactions three force reactions and no moment reaction this force P is in that plane that is a horizontal force but it's inclined and there is an angle here which is not 90 degree let's name it I don't know 60 degree but it's not in line with this one and it's not 90 degrees with that one that's kind of what we have over there okay let's focus on the joint L this joint um, if I look at that joint and I put a plane as I told you in the back now this time the force Q LN and LG are containing that plane and only KL are out of plane and this is the theorem number one if all forces are member belong to a plane except for one that is a zero force member meaning KL should be zero at that moment if you can erase it erase it if you cannot just mark it there let's keep going there's another way of analyzing this but I just wanted to apply and see what happened now with the joint L you have this this and that in the same plane and this is your zero force members for 2D what is that? all, all the planar zero force member rules still apply and this one's in, in a rule in a joint you have three two of them collinear and one is not the one that is not collinear has to be zero meaning Lm is zero and we can take it out of here also as a zero force member now let's keep going now we can move and we can do plenty of stuff let's say that we go to the joint K we can apply the same rule I can put a plane here this force KF and this force KG are in the same plane but K, uh, KJ I'm sorry but KG is sticking out of the plane so this is the theorem number one all of the forces are in one plane except one that is a zero force member KG is a zero force member now look at the joint K again this is once again these two members are in the same place so I can apply the rules for zero force members for 2D and if you do that here you have two members non-collinear both mo must be zero that is the the rule so eliminate both of them uh, now we can keep moving I don't know maybe let's go to the joint M I could do the same thing in joint M that I did before I can say if I pass a plane here then these two are in the same plane the one that comes out of the plane which is JM is gonna be zero and then on top of that I can say oh look at these two in the same plane only two non-collinear both should be zero and I can do that or let me switch this back I can apply the other theorem which is theorem number two which I could apply also before for joint K and the, that theorem what it says is uh, if you have a in a joint and you have three forces three bars two forces and a bar any combination that adds three 
in different planes, not in the same plane, the three of them are zero. So Jm, Mg, and Mh are zero. I can do that also. Look how this is being reduced, and I'm putting here all the zero force members that we have so far. Now, I switch to joint A. Does that look familiar? You name it. You apply the same rule and say, oh, this is one plane, and this is sticking out of the plane. Or I can say there are three bars in that joint, not in the same plane. This is theorem number two. All of them should be zero force members. And you erase them from there. Now, let's just focus on joint G. Put a plane over there in the back. This, this, and this are in the same plane. The one that is uh, the one that is coming out of the plane is this one, Fg. Fg is a zero force member. Then according to that, erase it. Now if you look at this joint here, and you focus in the 2D process, two are collinear, one is not, the one that is not is zero. Eliminate that. What else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Now, remember this force I told you is in the same plane, so I can go at the joint E and put a plane over there. This, this, and that are in the same plane. This is sticking out of the plane, meaning AE or EA is a zero force member. Eliminate it from there. Um, I don't know, it's getting trickier now. Anything else? Let me see, I have here four. I don't have any rule for four. I have here three, but they're in the same plane and two of them are not collinear. If these and these were collinear, and they were in the same plane, that would be zero, but this is not the case. I have one, two, three, four. I don't have any rule for that. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. There's no rule for that. I don't have any more zero force members. Uh, that I see. But we reduce all of these. Now, let's focus on reactions. What about reactions? Because I see this joint here, and just by inspection you can say that. Just by inspection you can say there's nothing hold, there's nothing in this joint, it's only one bar, and there's nothing else acting in this direction or in this direction, so both must be zero. But if you want to apply the same rules, you can apply the same rules. You put a plane, and you say, oh, BZ, BY, and FB are in the same plane, but BX is out of the plane, so BX should be zero. You can say that. And if you look at, again, the 2D case, you have two collinear, one is not. This is what is happening. So the one that is not is zero. BC is zero. And if you look at the joint D similarly, because it's exactly the same thing that we did before, uh, the same approach, this dy goes in line with that, but this dz and dx should be zero force members.